Hello, hello, welcome back to this very special episode of Daily Dose of EOS. Today, we're gonna have JC from EOS Force on as a guest. EOS Force, if you remember, I brought up briefly in my previous video. It is a ESIO based blockchain network with a different governing structure. A governing structure that they claim to mitigate voter buy, vote buying and block producer collusion while at the same time increasing voter turnout. Also, JC is going to give us some insight into what the user behavior difference is between the Eastern and the Western audience and what Western application developers have to pay attention to when adapting the application for the Eastern audience. And lastly, JC is going to tell us what the blockchain adoption is like in China. How despite the ICO bans and the security token bans that make the headlines, blockchain and cryptocurrency adoption is flourishing in the east in a way that we in the west could only dream of all this coming up right now hello welcome back to your daily dose of eos i'm your host jack wells you can always find me on twitter on at jack wells and today we have a very special guest uh, we have jc from eos force so jc why don't you tell anyone a little bit about yourself Right, so um, my name is JC. I am currently working with EOS Force to expand their social media presence, um, uh, social media marketing, and their uh, global operations, you know, their global community and, and stuff like that. So um, I'm working with EOS Force because um, like EOS Force is one of the Chinese projects that really want to expand glo uh, globally. So that's one of the things uh, um, I'm really trying to help them out. And I mean, social media marketing is just a huge no part of blockchain growth so yeah so um th and that's where my field of expertise is that um and that's hopefully what we're gonna discuss today eos force is and like you say it is a it's not a side chain you say it's a mainnet uh can you tell us a little bit more about that and what kind of projects you have on there what kind of what kind of things are interesting developing right now yeah that definitely so what eos force is uh, the eos force team they launched their separate mainnet on okay. EOS IO back in June. Okay. So they launched it a little bit later than the EOS uh, mainnet. They mm -hmm. did it not in the beginning of June, they did it, uh, I think, in June, they did it on June 22nd. Okay. So they launched it, so the team launched its mainnet and now it's all, it's, it supports a smart contract. Now it's already got some uh, uh, a, a dozens of dApps built on it. And also the main difference between EOS Force and other EOS uh, mainnets or side chains is that it's it's got a very unique governance system. Now you see EOS mainnet has yeah, a yeah. one vote, thirty vote cap, mm -hmm. uh, voting model, and that's creating it's huge. It's already created many scandals, you know, mm -hmm. for BP collusion mm -hmm. and you know vote banks like people trade votes for profits. So, mm -hmm. so it's it's got this power concentration on the on chain governance level. While EOS Force uses one vote, one one token, one vote model, mm -hmm. which means that if you have one token, you can only vote for one block producer. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't. So, you, so this basically prevents EOS BPs coming together and just vote for each other to keep it, each other in power. Now you can only either vote for yourself or you want to vote for someone else. So that's one major step, uh, I think, major upgrade on on-chain governance that mm -hmm. EOS Force has made. Another thing I just want to quickly mention here is that it offers a multi-chain architecture, which means that it offers like this kind of very developer-friendly sidechain package for any developer that want to build a sidechain on EOS Force. If you want to create a dApp, you can just take it from the EOS Force core team and just build one dApp chain yourself. So really, it has really low resources cost because what we see now is a lot of projects want to build on EOS, but because of the high cost of resources, they cannot mm -hmm. afford to, right? Mm -hmm. like, like the thing you just experienced now when you try to uh, you scatter on a Nuvasphere, mm -hmm. you didn't have EOS tokens, but on EOS Force, you wouldn't have that because the resources is, the resource cost is almost zero. Mm. But do you guys plan to like have some kind of inter blockchain communication link back to the mainnet for the EOS mainnet? Or is that something? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like the team is building a relay chain model right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It'll be live on early 2019. So the relay chain mm -hmm. will be able to connect the main chain to all the DAP side chains 
and to mm -hmm. all the other blockchains, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you name it. Oh, wow. Okay. So, cool, cool. Yeah. So we, we understand IBC into blockchain communication is a huge thing. We've mm -hmm. received so many messages from like the overseas uh, communities saying that, mm -hmm. oh, in your idea sounds great, but do you also support IPC? Yes, the US force definitely supports IPC. Right. Again, like I'm not too deep into the technology, but I'm guessing US force is based on the same technology EOS mainnet. I don't see why there'd be any difficulties, um, you know, building that bridge. What I always tell people is like, you should really think of the ESIO software as kind of like the Linux of blockchains, right? Linux is used in all different spaces, but they, the thing is that because they're all Linux, Linux they can all talk to each other. And that's the amazing thing about thing about it. So just to go back to EO, the EOS Force main chain uh, a bit, what kind of exciting projects are coming out from the main chain, the EOS Force main chain? So right now we already have all the damp, uh, gambling dams that you <laughs> And play uh, on the EOS okay. mainnet. So just to show people that hey, what you whatever uh -huh. you can do on EOS mainnet, you can do it on EOS Force as well. Mm -hmm. But what's exciting about EOS Force is mm -hmm. there are some really large non uh, NGO projects coming out of EOS Force. Non NGO. Non, non, yeah, non government organization, non profit organizations. So uh -huh. they are building their dApps on EOS Force as well. Okay. Uh, That's interesting. So this is very interesting because. Um, I think we have to take a step back and see how the whole global internet landscape looks right now. Mm -hmm. We've got, in China, you've got Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent dominating yeah. the whole internet yeah. space. In America, you've got uh, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple dominating the whole space. So really, the uh, very likely consequence of an internet startup is either they get, you know, they get merged mm -hmm. or they get bought by mm -hmm. these huge companies or they basically get stamped on. You know, they, they have very low chance of survival. So what we believe is that gonna be the next wave of blockchain is not on the internet space, it's not on these already existing e-commerce platforms, but more so take the form of NGO, of nonprofit organizations. So they are going to, you know, because if we look at the offline population in the world right now, Africa, most of Africa is not yet dominated by these huge internet companies. So and, and many southeastern uh, South Southeastern Asian countries, they are not dominated by these huge internet companies either. So if we can use non-profit organization, non-government organization dApps to, uh, to start to get into these markets, we, can, we might have a chance, you know, uh, not being uh, merged or not being eaten up by these huge internet companies in this region, if we can get ahead there first. So mm. that's what uh, NGO dApps are being built on US Force for. And there's already one that's currently under development. And then uh, we also will see some very, uh, very powerful the game dApps being built on US Force as well. Just held our dApp developer contest uh, globally uh, back in November, and it's just finished. We've got about 30 projects being under development right now. Wow, wow, okay. That's a really interesting approach uh, to take to kind of try to, uh, Kind of have a trojan horse into those markets due to ngo adapts that's really interesting i was wondering why all these ngo projects are popping up and now i think i finally understand why <laughs> i mean that's the only way to it I mean. mm. but like i think what's even more interesting is that you know if if we as community could, could kind of get our shit together and elect a bp that's based in those areas i think that would be even more amazing you know like one of the unique features of eos i think is that we're not depending on like cheap electricity, right? Like as long as you have the internet connection, there's some, some, some amount of infrastructure required, but we can have a BP node anywhere in the world. And where we place that BP node, like it kind of generates a community around it. So like if you could get, you know, again, if the community gets uh, their thing, you know, their political will together and install a BP in like South, Southeast China or like Africa. And I think we need to have a BP on the mainnet um, uh, EOS Nairobi that's doing that so like maybe maybe we're as a community we're, we're slowly pushing that, that direction I don't know I agree I definitely I think I mean US Nairobi and EOS Force like we, we have a very good relation relationship okay. with them and that's why like they, they also they uh, they submitted their energy dApp on top of the US Force you know they, they submitted their app to the competition as well so that's ah. like 
Well, I think what I think one of the issues we are having in the U.S. ecosystem right now is like these value-adding block producers. They are not the top mm -hmm. block producers. Mm -hmm. When you look at the top twenty-one block producers, yep. you don't even know who they are. Like, okay, we've got some yeah. really good names, but also when it comes to the transparency, like. Mm -hmm. It sucks. <laughs> you never, you, you, you see those block producers name popping up in the top 20, uh, 21 yeah. list. You see, who are these people? Like yeah. the familiar names like US Nairobi, they never rise to the top. I think that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's definitely an issue we got to solve. It's a shame, it really is. So on that topic, you know, you already know, I think you already know what I want to bring up. The start EOS vote buying scandal And then that's not the, like, of course, you, you, you the one who did the article on it, it's not the first one, you know, who did this back in um, November, I think, no, October, early October, first day of October. And along with a list of all the top BPs right now that's implicated in that document, yet two months on, three months on, yeah. nothing happens. Um, nothing so happens. what's your done on that? Like, what's your perspective on that? <laughs> I, I okay. like really careful in this respect because <laughs> on this topic because I we okay we just visited a start EOS in Chengdu like okay, yesterday okay. <laughs> so we have a really good relationship with them okay. so but on on a more objective note mm -hmm. I think this is an issue on the gov governance level right because right. currently we do not have any protocol or any rule in place. Mm -hmm. to against these you know uh governance behaviors against these like vote buying bp collusion acts we have mm -hmm. no tangible uh law enforcement in place yeah, on, yeah, on the yeah. blockchain government uh, because if you do mm -hmm. then there's an incentive to those mm -hmm. behaviors but if you do not mm -hmm. first of all you cannot you cannot have the ethical argument on mm -hmm. a on a on a market solution, you know, a governance, you know, on a market solution mm -hmm. based blockchain. So you can, mm -hmm. because ethical government, ethical arguments do not work. So yeah. what I think people do is really take a step back and see, okay, we now have these problems, but we understand that just arguing and whining isn't going to solve these mm -hmm. problems, right? We got to take a step back and see, okay, this is a problem on the scale of governance. This is a problem mm -hmm. that Got to be solved through the governance, through the on-chain, uh, you know, tech solutions. It needs to be solved in a way that's not just purely arguing on Reddit, right? right so right, that's right. my, right. So I think this is why EOS Force has uh, one of the largest community support in China. The reason is people uh, people saw early on that the one vote thirty, the one token thirty vote mm -hmm. uh, vote model is not going to work. Mm -hmm. is going to naturally lead to issues like BP collusion and mm -hmm. vote buying, like what Start EOS has been doing. Mm -hmm. It's going to lead that regardless. Mm -hmm. So US Force saw this issue early on and changed it to one token, one vote, just like in the real world politics. Right, I mean, right. have you ever questioned why in the real world politics we do not have a one, one you know, ID, one U, voter ID, 30 vote model, you can vote for 30 political candidates. We mm -hmm. don't have that. So I think mm -hmm. that's normal, right? Mm -hmm. So we changed that, and also our network participation is now 90%. That's the highest voter participation across the U.S. For, uh, ecosystem. I mean, that's just statistics right there. Yeah. Mm. So how has the one vote, uh, one candidate worked out? And that's not just the only thing that boosts your voter turnout. You guys have a model where if you vote for a candidate and it gets elected to be BP, <clears throat> the people who elected them actually get 70% of the block producer rewards. So like, I just want to get a, like, I, the way I see it, like, I think, like you said, it's almost inevitable. There will be some kind of uh, vote buying happening, but if what is vote buying from the system itself, rather than individual BPs, it kind of makes sense, but I'm not completely convinced yet. So let me like, Is there still like there's obviously still whales on US force, right? So how big of an influence do they have? Can the 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 the, the appealing factor that I see in one token one vote is that even if you're a whale, you can only vote in one of your candidates. Instead of like right now on EOS, because you have dirty votes, if you're a whale, you could vote in the entire top 21, which is kind of crazy. 
Whereas yep. again, like one token, one vote, even if you're well, you just vote in one of your candidates. So yeah, tell, tell us how that's been playing out so far, the one token, one vote, plus the voter incentive. Yeah, so I think that's a two part question. The first mm -hmm. part is um, like we do have a voter dividend sharing incentive model. Yeah. You know, 70% of the BP reward goes to the voters. Mm -hmm. um, one feature about this model is that users, no matter who they vote for, which mm -hmm. BP they vote for, top BP or the bottom tier BP, they mm -hmm. all get the same user dividend reward, meaning that they, uh, if you vote for a number one BP, you get, uh, for example, one US, uh, uh, for, uh, USC token mm -hmm. for your vote. Uh, but if you if you vote for the twenty first BP, the bottom tier BP, you also only get one US token. So okay, that's okay. so that's the equalizer, the incentive equalizer right there. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, seventy percent of the BP reward goes to the uh, goes to the um, voters, and the rest thirty percent go to the um, block producer for their uh, maintenance operations and for the developer fund. We have a developer mm -hmm. fund set up under these 30%. So uh, some 15% of some block producer reward goes to the developer fund. So mm -hmm. we also have that in place. And this incentive model has worked out really well. We have 90% uh, plus voter participation on the network, meaning that um, no matter if you are a whale or you are just an average token holder, uh, most people participate in the voting. So as for your second um, second question, which is, what about the whale holders? Yes, yeah. we do have uh, whale holders on the US Force mainnet, mm -hmm. but well, most of these whale holders have not activated their accounts. So that's the okay. good news. Because uh, for example, block one, mm -hmm. <laughs> earlier in when we launched the network, block one, we, we had this rule saying that the, the block one account will be locked mm -hmm. for a long time um, and currently it's still locked the 100 million i think it's 100 million right mm -hmm. or 1 billion so, uh, those tokens are of us block are still being are still under lockdown so they cannot retrieve it we do not want this kind of huge whale behavior in, mm -hmm. you know having a huge influence on the network mm -hmm. and also other whale holders um like the exchange and uh, the exchange tokens uh, some of some of them will be will be freezed really soon because uh, currently the top 23 US BP, US force BPs, they have passed a proposal saying that before uh, December 17th, if mm -hmm. you still have not activated your US force account, your 80% of your funds will be freezed. 80% of your uh, funds will be freezed? 80% of your funds will be freezed and 20% you can still retrieve. So that's before, mm -hmm. as long as you activate your accounts before, uh, December 17th, you are fine. But after that, your accounts are going to be freezed. You can only unfreeze those tokens if you participate in vote. Ah, okay, interesting. So you, so, you, yeah. you did your token distribution based on the Genesis snapshot? That's right. Ah, okay, so I, I might have some USC tokens lying around then. I should go claim them before 80% of <laughs> them is locked up. I did not know that. If I, you do I, it before 17th, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you if you're watching December seventeenth, go claim your Genesis EOSC tokens. Um, I'll leave a link. You, JC will send me some links. Uh, I'll include it down below so you guys go go catch that. Um, and also, we are doing an airdrop soon because um, mm -hmm. we just hit our target um, of, uh, in in over in global community growth. So we are doing airdrop uh, soon. So maybe mm -hmm. I will send you a link for so any you know for the the viewers on this channel. So yeah. those who you know watch this video will get that link. Yeah, yeah. So that's incentive to keep watching. You just get free candies out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, I have so many, so many more things to ask you uh, regarding EOS Force, but I think uh, I think we should wrap that up for now. But is there anything you want to talk about in terms of like the further east and west divide? Uh, you know, like we talk about a little bit about transparency, how business run. Tell us a little bit more about marketing, because again, we Novosphere we're trying to break into the um, the China market soon, uh, and it is kind of crazy for me at least. Like we don't really hear 
like maybe it was just because we don't pay attention, but EOS Force is I think this is like maybe the first or second time I ran across the name. It's only after watching your videos that I discovered EOS Force and that you were working for EOS Force. So maybe talk us about the marketing approach in China. Is it more just like uh, talking to people? Is it like billboard advertisements, like TV TV ads? Like what 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 is the what's the revenue? What's the channel you guys use, and how like how effective is it? So mostly, like when you, not just for EOS Force, right? For most Chinese uh, blockchain projects.、Mm -hmm. um, well, I will tell you, I will tell you all this honestly because some projects, even some really good ones. They just don't care about social media marketing. They, not just social media marketing. They don't care about marketing at all.、Mm -hmm. I would tell you straight because that's just some. I I know some really, you know, some projects with a very very solid tech、mm -hmm. background.、Mm -hmm. They just don't care about marketing. Nova so, Sphere is one of them. The, actually, <laughs> Nova Sphere. Nova Sphere is one of them. They're in the project I've been following for a very long time. Very great technology, but haven't done too much marketing, which is kind of sad. But sorry, go on. You say you were. Yeah, you like. <laughs> But、yeah. So, but for the ones that do,、mm -hmm. I can, many of them don't don't know how to use social media. That's the sad thing. They are、mm -hmm. they are kind of familiar with how social media、uh, marketing in China works, but they are not that familiar with things like Twitter, Facebook.、Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like I'm I'm helping. I'm, so EOS Force is one of my clients. I'm helping many blockchain projects just you know use social media to market their strength.、Mm -hmm. um, And I'm helping a lot of projects doing、uh, to、uh, do that. So as like, and also people ask me, how do you exactly、um, do social media marketing for your project in China?、Oh, yeah. You know, using、yeah. using Chinese social media platforms.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, one thing, one trend I've noticed is that many current、uh, existing crypto and blockchain communities in China they offer services to、uh, international projects to help them grow their. Uh, social media presence in China. Many Chinese communities do that already, but the, the sad thing is, what, what do they do? So they offer social media marketing services to international projects that want to expand their Chinese community. Ah,、uh, so oh, there are the service, there are marketing services out there that people could use to advertise themselves in the Chinese market. In China, okay, okay. that's right. Yeah, but the sad thing is, not many people know about these、uh, services or the communities that offer these service, services. So, the thing for me is, you gotta know the right people. Like China's blockchain space is very small,、mm -hmm. but it's also very wide range, right? You've、mm -hmm. got you've got all most of the miners,、uh, mining companies, crypto、mm -hmm. mining companies. They are in China. Most of the really good project blockchain projects they're also in China. So you gotta know the right people. You gotta find the one, or you can find one that could introduce you to the right people, and you gotta make the connections. So that's、mm -hmm. one thing you can find a local、uh, service provider、mm -hmm. that help that helps you do、uh, social media marketing in, in the Chinese market. And the second thing is you can really come to China for a visit once or twice.、Mm -hmm. And like I'm with, I'm working with some、uh, you know Western blockchain projects right now, helping to expand. Helping them to expand their Chinese、um, social media presence, or you can find people like me, like blo blockchain marketers, those people who understand blockchain、mm -hmm. technology, cryptocurrency, and know how to use social media at the same time. You can find people,、um, people like that to help you. So, but I think either approach, it's、mm -hmm. best for you to have a Chinese face, you know, to, for you to have a physical presence.、Um, How how big would you say? Just like focus on EOS projects. We know there's a big, like there's a lot of people in China, or well, there, I don't know. Maybe there's a few people that hold a lot of EOS. I don't know what's the case. Are there a lot of EOS token holders in China? And do you think it's important for、uh, EOS projects? Like I know gambling apps always have their site in Chinese, and maybe that's like a telltale sign that、uh, maybe a lot of users are actually in in China. Do you think this is the case? Like, is what's your, what's happened your experience so far?、Um, if like if you are in the if you are in China's blockchain space,、uh, especially since、uh, if you were in it already before two thousand seventeen, you will know that there is this huge、um, crypto billionaire and、uh, in China promoting、uh, EOS back、oh, really? in two thousand seventeen. Yeah. What's his so, name? 
Uh, I can tell you later, but uh, okay. not on not on live stream. But so, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so EOS blockchain. Mm -hmm. I think the mo the largest EOS communities they are all in China. So Chinese okay. market constitutes most of uh, EOS blockchains. That's why the top twenty one producers, most of them are based in China, even though you've never heard most yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. They have, yeah like, and no, we just assume uh, that like a few Chinese will just bought everything and then just stop voting for all the Chinese BPs. <laughs> That's I the mean, assumption I, we're making. We can say, like Ch Chinese businessmen, they are very, they are very agile in, mm -hmm. and very hungry in terms of where the profit was going. Yeah. So okay. they, so they saw the opportunities of yours so and they jumped on them okay okay but yeah so there's a huge chinese community and you you even stated that majority of the community is in china like physical individuals <laughs> not just like someone with a massive amount of tokens there's a lot of chinese people interested in the project there's actually a city in china mm -hmm. where and in in some stores in the in that city there you can actually buy stuff with eos tokens not not with Bitcoin, not with Ethereum, but with EOS. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, if you ever visit a city, you got to take some pictures. You got to show it to us. That sounds, that's crazy. I'll, I'll send you the name of the city to after the live stream. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, let me check the list of topics. I, I mean, I think I, I asked you everything I want to know. Like, there's so much more, but I think we have to save that for next time. I, and it, yeah, the, it's so interesting talking to you and hearing about this. Like all this is again, like even though I'm Chinese, I hardly follow the Chinese um, medias. Like I use WeChat here and there to communicate with the projects. But again, like it's something I have to look into and maybe even hire one of the services that you uh, you mentioned. Uh, and you could like tell me afterwards which one's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Mm, oh, OK, let's talk a little bit about different user behavior in different markets. What do you think is the biggest difference uh, between the North America, uh, North America and the East uh, user like behavior? Um, well, that, that's 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 a big question. Um, oh, OK, <laughs> well, I think, I think we can narrow it down. Uh, yeah. Like, um, let's start with uh, crypto wallet, right? So mm -hmm. when it comes to crypto wallet, um, mm -hmm. there, I mean, I just finished an interview with COO of Bixin yesterday, and Bixin started their crypto wallet service back in 2014. Okay. So they are probably the oldest crypto wallet provider in China. Okay. And okay. Their, their daily active user is is very close to that of Huobi Exchange and OK, OK Exchange. Wow. Which, so these two exchanges, like number two and number three top exchanges in the world. Like this wallet user, daily user account, active user account is very close to those exchanges. Mm -hmm. So what the, the, the approach this wallet takes is they integrate many social features into their wallet. So you can chat on, you can, you can chat with your friends on the wallet. You can use third party services, which include games, which include utility bill payments, which include like news media. So you can, you have all these third party uh, services, which are dApps built on this wallet. You could pay so, for utilities in crypto in China. That's bonkers. Oh yeah. Like, like EOS force has a partnership with math wallet and math um, well, math wallet. You could use EOSC EOS force tokens to pay for your <laughs> cellular plan. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Like, okay. This, this is, this is like, I, this is, this is what makes me most angry. Like, <laughs> People see the news about China's uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency ban all the time. Yeah, but what yeah. they do not realize is the biggest crypto market is in China. It's not in North America. It's not in Europe. You can pay a lot of things in China. Like this is wow. like people just see you know on those top media yeah, uh, media yeah. uh, saying okay China another ban China this ban. <laughs> For government this span like, uh -huh. but what they don't understand is top mining service companies in china are still in china top blockchain companies they are all located in china and it, actually right now we are in hangzhou probably the hottest 
hub, blockchain hub in Asia, way mm -hmm. in the city. And right now in this uh, eighth floor building, we have two dozens of mm -hmm. blockchain and crypto based companies. Wow. That's so, amazing. So like, so I mean, like, what's the deal? Unless, like, don't pay attention to those, you know, news articles, guys. Visit China for once, and you'll see how vibrant blockchain community is, is here. Oh, I think I gotta have to, I have to make a visit because, like, that's like that's what we always talk about, like mass adoption being to pay for stuff with crypto, and like we could barely pay for a cup of coffee here, whereas you could pay for your cell phone bills, you could pay for electricity, you could pay for everything. It seems almost in China already. That's crazy. Not everything, but we are working on it. <laughs> so one day you'll be able to buy a house, but you know, <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> oh man, that is crazy. So the, I guess like the entry point for people is the wallet. And like you said, the Chinese wallets have a lot more functionality. They kind of like, I would almost want to say like their, their whole like, you know how like Apple have their own operating system, Android have their own operating system. It almost feel like the wallet is trying to become like its own operating system that covers everything. Like you could do everything within this one wallet. Is is that the direction they're going? What they're trying to do? That's a, yeah, I think that's a very very acute observation uh, description because uh, like any user who have used WeChat before, which is mm -hmm. world's largest social media uh, social application, right? Mm -hmm. They know that it's a mega app, meaning that you can basically live your life on it. It's got mm -hmm. everything you need for mm -hmm. your daily life. You can mm -hmm. you can buy movie tickets. You can order doctor appointments. You can oh. uh, pay for your utility bills. You can send tra transactions uh, between uh, to your friends, mm -hmm. and also you can you can you can you can you know like people use Lyft or Uber in North America, right, to order mm -hmm. their taxis. But you can do that on WeChat as well. So the trend is definitely. It's going to be this kind of mega app because uh, Western user behavior differs from the Eastern ones mm -hmm. in that in the West, you have Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter, mm -hmm. all these very different social media platforms for different functionalities. Mm -hmm. Whereas in China, you've got WeChat for everything. You've got WeChat for everything you need. And like, so oh that's. But are those services building on top of WeChat or like WeChat built out? Like I'm guessing WeChat didn't build an Uber, you know, they, they just allow that application to be integrated within uh, WeChat. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, they okay. allow third party services to build on top of it. But the thing is, they offer such smooth user experience that you mm -hmm. would think that you are using WeChat taxi service mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's how smooth the user experience is. I guess like the most app, like the one that's doing the best, I think personally, is like the Meet that one wallet because like they integrate a lot of the things. Like you never have to leave the Meet that one wallet to do any like to interact with any of the dApps. Versus now like some of the like more secure, like one of the things you mentioned earlier is that one of the Ethereum wallets. I think what was the name that the wallet, the Ethereum wallet that allows you only you to do transactions. Uh, my ether wallet yeah my ether wallet right 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 so people actually in, in north america we like that <laughs> like we like like because we think it's more secure like the less things are happening on it the the less chances things could go wrong right because like, allowing for third party interact with your wallet maybe they will still steal your funds and that kind of stuff so yeah it's just a very different mindset like we have one we have one app for one thing and that one app does that one thing very well. That's what we want. Whereas like WeChat just kind of just sucks everything in into one thing. Yeah, like most people, when I talk to them about this, they are really surprised at how different, you know, mm -hmm. different markets are. So I think that's why being able to, uh, you know, speak both languages, it's mm -hmm. very important and offers you a very unique advantage in the in blockchain space. I think that's something that uh, I see, see definitely more and more people are realizing it and more and more people are paying attention to it. Cool, cool. Whew. So that was just a small that's a piece. Lot of cover, yeah, it? that's a lot of cover. And I would love, love, love to have you on for another time. But you know, we've been talking for almost an hour now. Uh, I think you probably, you're probably busy. It looks like it's pretty dark. For, what time is it right now in Hangzhou, actually? It's like, it's 15 past eight. 15 past eight. Oh, so it's not that late. But, uh, but you know, you gotta, you gotta go home and do stuff. So uh, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Do you have anything to say before you go, um, JC? 
you know, I just want to say, you know, th really thanks to you, you know, Jax, to uh, reach out for reaching out to me because um, I think this is a very good opportunity, not just for the, both of us, but for more people to understand how a global blockchain community plays a role in moving the technology, moving the community forward. It's projects like US Force, like NoveSphere, that really, you know, foster and conversations like this that foster discussions, you know, between the different markets. And I think that's one of the great things about, you know, blockchain industry because it's borderless, right? You know, you have people yeah. coming yeah. from all over the world discussing the same thing. I think that's something really, uh, really impressive about this space. So really, thank you very much for reaching out to me. And thank you for answering. Um, I, again, like, I think you're right. One of the big things that we have, we have, we as a community have to understand is that EOS is not based in America, it's not based in China, it's everywhere. And we as Westerners can't just freak out when a Chinese BP gets elected, you know. Like, I'm sure there's some great Chinese BPs who are, you know, not doing fishy stuff. <laughs> so we just have to kind of take the time and learn and communicate and understand what their mindset is and what, what, how they, how, what their approach is. So I want to thank you very much for giving me a small slice of what, that's, uh, what, what that world is like. And once again, this is JC from ES Force. I'm your host, Jack uh, Wells. JC, do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, do you have a Twitter account as well? Uh, how, can, how can people find you? How can, I know you have a Medium account, so I'll link that definitely. Oh, I will, uh, so JC uh, bottom slash uh, Z H A N G Z C JC Jan and bottom so bottom slash between JC and Jan okay. and then uh, one more bottom slash after Jan. I will send you that after. Okay, cool, cool. I'll and so I'll include all the things that you can find, all the places you can find Jay Z. I'll include all the places you can find me. Um, so that's it. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Stay cool. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was really, really cool having JC on. And again, I'll have a link to all his stuff down below. He's uh, he's very active on Medium. Uh, he just started his YouTube channel, which I'll include in the link below, and also his Twitter handles and everything else like that. As for me, if you enjoyed this video and you found it informative, please leave it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends, and you're watching this and you haven't done it already, please hit the subscribe button. We just crossed a hundred subscriber line so now i get to have my custom url now let's see if we get to 200 i don't know what that gets me but it would just be a cool number to get to so anyways that's your daily dose of eos my name is jack and i'll see you tomorrow